G'day, my name's Bruce and I'm going to go through a couple of things that we use here at Bombardieri High School to um, handle cattle and break them in for shows. First of all, you'll need halters. We've got three different types of halters here. We've got this one, which is called a hackamore halter. It's a fairly old fashioned style of thing, but very effective. This is similar, hackamore, in that it's got the metal chain that goes under their neck, but this has got wide straps whereas opposed to that being finer rope. And over here, we've got a traditional rope halter. One other thing you'll need is some leads. And in this case, when you're breaking them in, you need a nice long lead, as well as shorter ones for, once you've got them broken in, you can actually lead them. Okay, when you're getting your halter ready, you need to remember that the chain that you're going to lead it from where well, you can see where Ellie's got a thumb through it there, that needs to come out on the left-hand side of the steer, under its jaw. So on the left-hand side, the steer's left-hand side, under its jaw. And the large, the long strap is going over the steer's ears, behind his ears, and that chain is going under his jaw, and the, that bit that she's touching there now is over his nose. So his nose has got to go in that hole. Now we'll see if Ellie can get it on. Sometimes it's easier to have a second person to help line things up. Okay, once you've got your, your halter attached on the top, you need to check it's on correctly. You need that nose strap to be about halfway along the nose. If when you first start, if you've got animals that are going to pull a lot when you first tie them up, you probably need to be a little bit higher up the nose because as they're pulling it, they'll pull it right down towards the edge. So you've got to be really careful that they don't get it right down here, right on their nostrils and possibly pull it off and it makes breathing hard and those sorts of things. You can also see that the, the chain is under his jaw and that's the hackamore collars, that's the idea of those, that the chain digs into the jaw, makes it sore so that they respond to it a bit easier than the rope, rope halter. Same as before, making sure the adjustments are right so that the nose strap is across about the middle of their nose. And there's different size halters of this type, so if it's too big and it's going to slide down across his nose, you need to get a smaller one or change to a rope halter, which is a little bit more adjustable. I, I tend to like using these ones when we first start because of the wide straps don't dig in so much, especially if they're going to fight a lot, um, because I have seen the rope halters create burns and whatnot, and then the, the animal gets um, less inclined to participate what you, and do what you want it to do because it's in pain. So this wants to be um, sore enough to make him react without making him negative. When you're putting a rope halter on, we're putting his nose through here and that's got to go over the back of his ears. As you can see. There we go. And then pull the rope up, pull it tight. I'll just close that for a moment. And now again we have to do that adjustment to get it in the middle, which is Ellie's doing on the other side. All right, so now we've got that rope across his, the middle of his nose. Look around this way, buddy. Yep, okay. Once you've got the halters on the animals, you can see he's not quite as um, enamored with the idea now. Tie them up a little bit so that they can feel the halter actually pulling against them. And then we're just trying to get them used to people being close and them being um, touched. So we come over, we're just going to brush, just generally, we're not trying to get too fancy, just get him used to being touched and the feel of the brush and the fact that there are people really quite close to him. So you can just scruff it around so they get the feel for it and you will work out how flighty they are, whether you can go further or you need to be just on the top of them or the side of them. The other tip is coming over the top at the start here, at the top of the rail, because if you put your hand through a rail and the animal bucks, or comes towards you, whatever, you could might snap an arm. So over the top is always a much safer 
safer option. There you go, Ellie. You can hook into that now. And you can see Connor's over here. He's doing the same thing, just giving him a few scratches around the neck, just getting him used to having someone being close to him. Give him a good big scruff along the back with that brush, Connor. So he gets used to that feel there. And here you can see Connor standing right beside him. So the animal gets used to the fact that um, there's going to be people around when you're brushing, clipping, washing, and obviously parading. And in a large class, you could have two or four people, two on each side, so that they, um, lots, of, lots of kids get a go, and the animal gets used to lots of people really quickly. Brushing that you actually do will depend a fair bit on the temperament of the animal and the patience of the people working with it. In this case, these animals aren't terribly worried by this, so it's not a huge problem. We could probably brush them for quite a while. If you've got an animal that is a little bit more flighty, um, do a bit of brushing, and as soon as they calm for a moment or two, and feel like they're a little bit more relaxed is when you stop so you finish on a on a positive and that is with the breaking in that's a really good rule to work by so never finish with the steer winning an event you want to make sure you're in control so try and finish on a positive at all stages